morning. I'm Matthew from Solar Bike. I'm here with Camilo, the mechanic from Chile. Today we're going to do an instructional video on how to assemble an electric conversion kit. So here on the table I've laid out the basic components that you need and that should come with a kit. You have a wheel, a motor, it should be seated in a rim. You need to choose your rim size. You have a bat, uh, carrier rack. Here we have the controller, the motor controller battery. This is a 36 volt 10 amp hour lithium ion phosphate battery. This is really what you need. It's quite solid. It's nice. It gives you excellent power and excellent lifetime if you take care of it. Make sure you never let it decharge. We have a throttle. You'll need that also. And you'll need a battery bag. So generally you put the, uh, we'll show you later on as we go, but you put the battery in the bag, controller in here and all the cables. Uh, strap if you need it can help to put hooks and things under and we have two parts here these are brake cables you don't really need them they all they are normal brake cables with a wire that can connect to the controller here and when you press the brakes it will kill the motor they're not necessary extra cables in the way extra things that can go wrong don't really need it this is our pedelec sensor it works you attach this silver part to the frame you need to undo your crank and attach that to the frame and this part you put on the inside on the axle as it spins it can tell the controller that you're providing power to the motor and so you don't need a throttle with this or you can use both together once again I don't like it I find them unnecessary I find them a little bit dangerous because when you pedal suddenly the electric motor kicks in the throttle is by far the best you can get thumb throttles if you have bad gears here otherwise just stick with the twist throttle it's generally quite nice and you get very good control with it really you only need a few simple tools maybe not even a screwdriver cable ties uh, spanner 22 mil some cable cutters uh, probably don't need that it's for a demonstration you need to change your tire some kits might come with wheels uh, with tires some not allen keys that's all you'll need so I'm just going to show you how to put it together basically looking here. So here we go, if you have a look, first get this one. The cable from the motor has three power wires, a yellow, green and blue generally, and these are your hall sensor wires. So be careful, make sure that they're all tight, make sure that no pins are bent, and then connect these to the controller. Everything can only connect one way or else it's colour coded. So you connect that one, uh, these you pull back the plastic, you connect, push the push them together and then put the plastic over the top and they actually come nice and tight except I've done blue to yellow there. There we go, blue to blue should work a bit better. If your motor makes a funny sound you might have one backwards. Okay so that's the motor connected, three power and the timing wires there. Uh, doesn't matter what we connect next, we'll go for the throttle. Once again, only one connection, you can't mistake it, three wires click together. Uh, the battery, once again, only one connection, this one connects here. Okay, you need a fuse, this is usually a 25 amp fuse. You definitely need a switch. If you don't turn it off when you're not using it, the battery will drain. Very slowly, but it will drain. So off, on. Okay, and this is for charging, so you connect that to your charger to charge your battery. Okay, and that's basically it. So if we turn it on, it should be ready to go. So make sure if you spin it now, it will move, but be careful because you can damage the cable. If it spins, it can cut on there. So if you want to try it, you need to get something to hold the axle stable there. So like a pair of pliers, and then you can see that as I spin the throttle, there you go. It's actually, you've got to be quite careful as you do it and see that you get power. Okay, so this is the bike we'll be putting it on today. A customer of ours came along and asked us to fit it. And so it's just, uh, it's a reasonably okay mountain bike, a giant mountain bike. So it should go on without a problem. Uh, let's see how it goes. So the first thing we need to do, first thing you need to do is put the rack on. If you have, you really need a decent rack. You've got weight, so if you get a rack like mine, this part goes on the top, you connect that part here or up here sometime, and you can adjust it. And then these, the curly bits, go backwards. So they sit like that. So and when you connect it, first connect these, connect to that, and then put it on. It's much easier once it's all solid. 
Okay, that's the rack. Luckily hers came with a rack. It's really good when they come with a rack because that's actually about, takes about half the time to put it together. All right. So. Here we go, spin it over. Take off the wheel. And then you need to put this tyre on that tyre. I might be nice and get kids with tyres in the future. I think it's a good idea, but the boxes come a bit bigger. So, changing the tyre. Right. Okay, so now we've got the tyre changed. We're going to put it on the bike, so you need to release your brakes. The cable needs to go down the left fork. So if you're sitting on the bike, the fork that's on your left there. Okay, and uh, wind it back, put it in. Get it, needs to fit very, very nicely in there. It needs to be really tight and don't jiggle it too much. Then you need to tighten it up. Sometimes the fork gaps need a little bit of filing. Get a flat edged file and just do a tiny little bit of filing. Make sure, see where this comes out here? Make sure that the cable actually faces down the fork. If you have that spun around, then it'll be pushing here and it'll be more likely to get damaged. Okay, try not to damage this. Any little cuts in any of these wires will stop it working. Okay, so, okay, so when you tighten it, you need a 22 mil spanner. Tighten it and just tighten it and make sure it's even. Push down, try to put all the force going down. It needs to sit really nicely in the fork gap, okay? It shouldn't have much friction there, a little bit maybe, especially as you go much tighter, but it's okay. Tighten it up evenly and make sure it really runs dead straight and you shouldn't have any problems. Okay, so we've tightened that up nicely. Should, should spin reasonably freely there. And make sure it's really tight, especially when you start riding it. Be careful, you don't want it to come off so when you're going over bumps and off gutters, go really slowly for a while at least. Okay, so the next thing you, you might as well put on is the throttle. Then you're so, going to need to take the grip off. So my trick is get a bit of deodorant, spray it on, <laughs> and a butter knife. Just put it, lift up a little bit with the butter knife, spray a bit of deodorant in there. And then just wiggle it from there down and it should get it. You might have to do the button knife thing again. Okay, comes off yes. nice and easy. Okay, so the next thing is the throttle. The throttle just slides on. Goes right up there, and then you need to use an Allen key. To... There's a little Allen key spot there, and you need to Allen key it to tighten it. Very easy, very simple. Okay, seems to go nicely. Just be careful here. Sometimes like that, actually, we're going to have to slide this up because that's touching there. You won't be able to drop back a gear. So we'll just slide that up now. Slide it up, yeah, see there you can hear it can click and then uh, re tighten it there. Okay. Next, we put on the battery bag. So, the battery bag's got these two things in there. Might as well pull them out. You can use them if you want. I don't. 